And this looks like it has all the makings of a spin-off no one asked for. The kind of thing where all the actors and characters you knew and loved are replaced by beige facsimile copies. Think How I Met Your Father. Ozpol fans couldn't get enough of the original John Barillaro Jobs for the Boys saga. The whole story stunk to high heaven, but thankfully it played out largely in public. Well now, the Australian Labor Party have decided that the time is right to launch their own spin-off. Senator Don Farrell, Minister for Trade and Tourism, seems to have found himself in warm, Barillaro-esque waters as we start to learn more about the appointment of his factional ally, friend, and former Senator Chris Ketter as Australia's Consul General and Senior Trade and Investment Commissioner in San Francisco. This is one of those jobs the media like to refer to as a plum role. Here's Chris Ketter in his maiden speech from 2014 some other context. I'm also grateful to former SDA National President and former Senator Don Farrell and his wife Nympha for their friendship and support. Don's departure this year was a great loss to the Senate. I acknowledge Don and Nympha in the gallery tonight. On the surface at least, this has all the hallmarks of an alleged jobs for the boys scenario. Alleged. The Don Farrell saga was broken in an article published by The Australian. It's alleged that Don Farrell, in appointing his pal to the plum trade role in July 2023, overruled the decision made by a three-person recruitment panel back in December 2022. To summarise the rough timeline put forward by The Australian, the position was advertised in September 2022 and applications closed in October 2022. In December 2022, at the conclusion of the recruitment process, the panel recommended Ms. Kirsten Thompson, then head of the America's Investment Desk at the Australian Trade and Investment Commission, aka Austrade, for the San Francisco gig. Ms. Thompson had headed up Austrade's America's Investment Desk since 2021 and had more than two decades of experience in trade and investment. This is important. According to the Australian, Ms. Thompson had been notified she was the sole preferred candidate at the conclusion of the recruitment process. Fast forward a few months and it's alleged that Senator Farrell's office relayed that Chris Ketter will be handed the job instead. The Australian report that government sources have said that as a consolation for losing the San Francisco job to Farrell's labour mate, Ms Thompson's name would be added to an Austrade merit list to be considered for another posting at a later date. The Australian have reported that Although it has not been made public yet, Ms Thompson will take up the role of Senior Trade Commissioner in Singapore next year. Oh yeah, I've left out the best part. According to the reports, Ketter was actually appointed to this plum role without even applying for the position. And to add even further insult to injury, it's the former preferred candidate and woman that Ketter leapfrogged for the role that's having to train him. Took some forensic level googling, but I managed to find the job ad from last year. At the time, Austrade were looking for an experienced executive to build commercially focused relationships with the North American business community. They were looking for someone to develop trade and investment strategies. So on the one hand, we've got Ms. Thompson, who by all reports has over 20 years experience in trade and investment, and has spent the last couple of years working as the head of the America's investment desk at Austrade. And then on the other hand, we've got Chris Ketter, whose sole employment experience prior to becoming a senator in 2014 appears to be the 32 or so years he spent working for the Shoppies Union. He wasn't exactly the most active senator either by all accounts. At one one point averaging 11 questions per year. When he lost his Senate seat in 2019, he quickly picked up a job as senior advisor with Richard Miles. You see, Miles wanted to make sure that people of faith felt comfortable voting for Labor, and as a member of Labor's conservative right faction, Ketter's brief was to help win back support in Queensland. Did I mention that Ketter holds the dubious honour of being one of only two Labor senators who voted against same-sex marriage in 2017? Sounds like a great fit for a San Francisco gig, doesn't it? Comparing the pair yeah, it's hard to see how Ketter managed to leapfrog a seemingly more experienced and qualified candidate for a job that he allegedly hadn't even applied for, isn't it? As an aside, it's good to see Austrade walking the strength in diversity talk here by pushing aside a highly qualified and recommended woman for this position in favour of a 60-year-old white guy. Diversity. Here's Jim Chalmers fronting the media to talk about the economy and given the unenviable task of responding to questions on Don Farrell's decision making. Well, Chris Ketter is incredibly experienced uh, across government, uh, in the defence industry and in the technology sector uh, as well. Uh, and his experience aligns really well uh, with our objectives in that part of the world. Uh, as you allude to in your question, uh, from time to time, governments of both persuasions over a number of years will appoint people who have a range of experience, including political experience, 
I think what uh, ministers have been able to do in this government is to strike a much better balance than we saw under our predecessors. Uh, not to say that there will never be uh, appointments of this nature, uh, but that we take a more appropriate approach to it. Uh, Chris Ketter is a, a person of uh, substance and experience, and he will make uh, a very fine appointment. S Steph. But he didn't even apply for the job, so why was he given it when he didn't apply for it? Well, I've just run through all the reasons why we've appointed uh, Chris Ketter to this position. Uh, he will do a great job and he will rely on uh, his substantial experience. Uh, and as a government, we have struck a much better balance uh, between uh, relying on the experience and the expertise and the talents of people who might have had political experience uh, versus uh, people who've come uh, out of the uh, department itself. Thanks very much. Let's look at how Don responded to questions on his pal's appointment in question time. Warning, this is pretty dry stuff, but does give you a great insight into how to avoid answering a question that you really don't want to touch. My question is to the Minister for Trade and Tourism, Senator Farrell. Minister, is it correct that you instructed Austrade to overturn a merits-based selection process for Australia's Consul General and Senior Trade and Investment Commissioner in San Francisco that had already been completed and recommended the appointment of a highly skilled trade expert, Ms Kirsten Thompson, to fill that role. Thank you, Senator Hume. Minister Farrell. Uh, thank you, President, and uh, thank you, Senator Hume, for her, uh, her question. Um, uh, look, I am a little bit surprised that this question is being asked at this time, given that the uh, announcement in respect of uh, uh, former uh, Senator Ketter was made uh, some months ago, and we uh, very publicly uh, announced that uh, the vacancy that uh, had uh, been occurring at uh, uh, San Francisco was going to be filled by uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Ketter. Um, we, have, we have followed all of the usual processes. Um, all of the usual. Well, well, you might not like this, Senator Canavan, but we have followed all of the usual processes. Uh, that apply in terms of the selection of people who uh, represent us uh, in these uh, missions uh, overseas. Um, <clears throat> I'm very comfortable, I have to say, with the appointment of, uh, of Mr Ketter. His, his <coughs> uh, thank you, Senator Birmingham. Uh, thank you, President. Point of order on direct relevance. Senator Hume's question did not raise Mr Ketter at all. Her question went specifically to the merits-based process that had led to the selection, apparently, of Ms Kristen Thompson, a fact that had not been made public, notwithstanding the minister's insinuations, and whether or not it is correct that he had overturned that process. I ask you to draw him to the detailed part of the question, which is clearly about the merits-based selection process that was undertaken. Uh, Senator Wong. President, uh, on the point of order, the minister clearly was responding uh, to uh, the appointment, which was the, uh, the nub of the question, and I uh, put to you that uh, he was being directly relevant in accordance with the standing orders. Um, I do believe the minister was being relevant to the question because it did go to the nature of overturning uh, what was alleged to have been a decision, but I will listen carefully to the, uh, the minister's continued answer, and if he is not, if he strays from the question, I'll draw his attention to that. Thank you, Senator Birmingham. Minister Farrell. Uh, thank you, uh, President. Um, the government, uh, when they're making these sorts of appointments, and um, me in particular, uh, considers uh, a number of factors uh, where there is a clear advantage uh, to be represented by people. Uh, who have had uh, distinguished careers beyond the, uh, the public service, uh, such as uh, business people and, uh, and for former uh, parliamentarians. Um, I'd note that that was uh, <coughs> frequently done by the, uh, the, former, uh, uh, the former government. That's the process. That's um, the process Minister Farrell, uh, Senator Hume. All right, point of order. The question was specifically about whether the minister overturned a merits-based process. And the minister is being relevant to the question. Senator he did Hume. not answer that question. He uh, has not answered that question. Senator Hume, uh, there is ample opportunity after this in take note to pursue your point of view. But the minister is being relevant. He's talking about the selection process 
uh, and the reason for the decision. I am listening carefully, and if, he, if there is a deviation from the question, I will remind him and draw him back to it. Thank you. Minister Farrell. Thank you, President. Uh, I followed the usual processes which uh, apply in respect of these sorts of uh, appointments. Uh, Senator Hume, first supplementary. Thank you, President. Minister, when did you advise Austrade of your intention to overturn the process? Had Ms Thompson already been advised of her selection at that time? And if so, how long after her selection was she advised that you had overturned the process? Thank you, Senator Hume. Minister Farrell. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, thank you uh, President. Um, well, my understanding was that uh, Ms Thompson uh, made uh, an application for a number of positions, and of course she's uh, now representing uh, uh, Australia, or about to represent Australia uh, in Singapore, and I'm very confident uh, that she will do a uh, terrific uh, job uh, in that regard. Um, all of these processes were conducted in the proper way. Um, we made, or I made a decision uh, based on, uh, based, based, based on based on what I thought was in the best interests of Australia in its uh, San Francisco uh, uh, mission. Uh, Senator Hume, second supplementary. Thank you, President. As a result of overturning the merits-based process following the selection and notification of a preferred candidate, has Austrade had to provide an alternative opportunity to Ms Thompson to avoid paying compensation for ministerial cancellation of that merits-based process? And is it true that Ms Thompson even had to train her replacement, Senator Farrell's former union and Senate colleague, Chris Ketter? Uh, thank you, Senator Hume. Minister Farrell. Uh, thank you, uh, President. Well, can I say um, Ms Thompson will be a wonderful representative, like so many hard-working members uh, of Austrade. In... Uh, thank you, Senator <coughs> Farrell. Senator Hume. Mr. Chris Ketter is going to be. I just want the question answered. I will remind the minister of the question. Uh, Senator Hume, Senator Farrell. Um, I've, uh, I've answered your question. Uh, I've, I've, I've answered your question, uh, Senator uh, Hume. Um, uh, minister Farrell, please resume your seat. Senator Birmingham. Uh, President, it is not directly relevant for a minister just to say I've answered the question when the question has so blatantly not been answered. It was a very clear question about whether or not Ms Thompson had had to be offered an alternative role to avoid compensation payments. Right. Senator Farrell has not come remotely close to answering that Thank question. Thank you, Senator Birmingham. Uh, Senator Wong. Uh, I, I would make the point that my recollection is in a previous answer, in fact, there was a reference to which appointment had been made. But I make the point, if Senator Birmingham is correct and reference to a previous answer uh, is not appropriate. There would be a lot of former ministers on that side who did not comply with that order for many years. So I submit to you uh, that uh, I take, I'll, I'll take the interjection from Senator Cash, who is she seems to think Senator Wong, pointing on out point of order. how they behave is order. order. I will remind senators that interjections are disorderly. Senator Cash, I've just reminded the chat. Senator Wong, Senator Wong and Senator Cash, order, order. I have just reminded the Senate that interjections are disorderly. Senator Mackenzie, in relation to your point of order, Senator Birmingham, just before you rose, I did remind uh, the senator of um, the question, and he has given a response. Um, that he believes, I, from recollection, that he, he, he followed all processes. Um, Minister. Uh, thank you, President. Um, as I said, Ms Thompson has been appointed to a position which I understand she applied for and, uh, and uh, will do a fantastic job and, 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 will, ha and, will, do, and will do and will do a fantastic job representing Australia as as all of the Austrade, as all of the as all of the Austrade workers do. Uh, Minister Wong. Thank you. I ask that further questions be placed on notice. So does all this pass the pub test? It's a no from me. But we'll have to wait and see whether or not it's enough to get the attention from the knack. Regardless, though, this is the sort of thing that erodes confidence in politicians, no matter who's in government. Whether or not it generates the same level of interest online as the Barilaro saga, though, remains to be seen.